Hello, Murphy here, and we're going to talk about Zuko. Specifically about his redemption and how it was written so incredibly well. I've read a lot of redemption arcs in my time and seen some, I guess, as well, and a lot of them are really satisfying, some of them are great, and some of them are a little bit feeling abrupt or just not I don't connect with them so well, but I think of all the redemptions that I've seen, Zuko's is both technically so fantastically done, but also on a personal level, I find that his, I find his redemption arc to be probably the most relatable feeling one that I've seen. So I want to talk about Zuko's character, what he's been through, and the decisions that he made, and what makes his redemption arc so satisfying to me. Even as a 13-year-old child, Zuko showed incredible compassion when he spoke out against the concept of using new recruits as bait and sending them to their death in war. Zuko spoke up and said that this was wrong and that they couldn't treat their people this way. He was met with humiliation, physical abuse from his father as he was on his hands and knees begging for mercy, and ultimate rejection as his father excommunicated him from the family and from the country. And the scar that his father gave him was used as a symbol to show that he was rejected by his family, by the royalty of the Fire Nation, as well as a signifier that he should, therefore, be rejected by the people as well. So what does a child do when he's met with that kind of abuse, rejection, and humiliation? He pushes down the thing that got him here, that morality that he displayed that caused him to become so rejected. He isolates it, makes it small, shoves it aside, tries to become the man that it would take for him to gain his honor back, or rather, to gain his father's love back. He dedicates his entire life to this goose chase of finding the avatar that's been missing for a century. He dedicates his entire personality, his entire being, to this thing that he thinks will make his father love him again, or at the very least, accept him as a human again. And the thing that sparked his father's rejection that morality is what he tries to push down and push down so that he can be something worthy of his family's love. But even through all that, the morality and compassion that his mother and now uncle have been teaching him still shows through. He isn't able to completely squash it. He leads the officers on his ship like a dictator, yet he won't let one fall to his death and chooses to let the Avatar go in order to make sure that he and his men find safety. He'll fight General Zhao, but he won't kill him in the Agni Kai, even though he had every right. And when that same man is being attacked, despite what they've been through, and despite the fact that Zhao was going to kill him dishonorably after the Agni Kai, Zuko offered to help him. We also see him showing compass compassion with his uncle, but I think that that's a little bit uh, of a different kind of compassion, because that's his family, that's someone who's shown loyalty to him, not someone who in his mind, doesn't deserve his loyalty. These are average people that he could say, I'm the prince and I'm your leader, or you're my enemy, you deserve the fate you get, but he shows them compassion instead. And this doesn't excuse all the bad things that he did, it's just something to note that even when he was trying to be who he needed to be for his father, he couldn't stop himself from also being who he truly was as himself, for himself. Eventually, Zuko and Iroh go on the run, and they take on the life of humble pedestrians working at a tea shop. This humble life of peace and prosperity is enough for Iroh, but he still backslides the moment he realizes that he can keep pursuing the Avatar. Why? I think for two reasons. One I'll get to later, but one because he still wasn't doing this for himself. He went from being an abused, broken kid, teen, trying to do what it took to earn the love of his distant, cold, hateful, abusive father, to being a abused, broken teen, trying to do what it took to earn the love of his loving, caring uncle. He kind of just moved that weight from his father onto Iroh, and at the end of the day, he was still changing who he was in order to suit what he thought someone else wanted 
from him in order to gain their love. Now, Iroh's love was unconditional. Iroh was there for him because he loved him and because Zuko deserved family, end of sentence. Iroh's love was honest and pure, but Zuko, an abused child, didn't know how to respond to love that way, and he was still responding as someone who needed to become something for someone else. So he moved that trauma from his father to his uncle and just tried to become what his uncle, what he thought his uncle wanted from him. And so <laughs> when the opportunity presented itself to return back to putting that trauma on his father and gaining that approval for his father, he went right back to it. At the end of the day, this part of his story didn't begin his redemption because he was still working to serve to please someone else. He was still taking on a persona for someone else. But that was never what Iroh wanted for him. He didn't want Zuko to take on a persona to please him. He didn't want him to live his life serving Iroh and Iroh's ideals and goals. He wanted him to find himself. And I think the juxtaposition of Zuko still being very confused as to what it would take for him to get on the right path and Iroh being increasingly frustrated because all he wanted was for Zuko to find himself, the combination of these two characters struggling with the same goal, combined with everything that Iroh has been for Zuko and for us, the, the viewers, up to this point, is what made this scene so powerful when Iroh finally raises his voice and confronts him in one of his most blunt scenes in the series. Because after everything that they've been through and everything Iroh has tried to teach him, Zuko still doesn't understand. It's not about being something for someone else. It's about looking inward and asking himself the real question, who are you and what do you want? And for a time that seems like it works. He's been challenged, now he lives happily as a good person. <laughs> But that's just not how healing works. Being challenged and told to do better isn't what changes a person. He still had a lot of self-discovery to go before he could actually know how to walk on the right path. He genuinely wanted it at this point and he was trying, but he still didn't know what it looked like to be a whole human yet. He still didn't know what it looked like to make choices for himself and for that to be enough because his whole life he's been told by his father and his sister that himself isn't enough. So when his sister offers him everything that he's spent a huge portion of his life working toward, he returns to his old ways again. And this time he betrays the one man who has always believed in him, always stood by his side, and the one person that's given him unconditional love. When he returns home, he gets everything he ever wanted. He has his honor back, He's accepted by his family, he's accepted back into society, and yet it's all hollow. In fact, despite having everything he ever wanted, he finds that the thing he feels most is anger. Anger at nothing, anger at everything, but mostly anger at himself. When I was a kid and I was working through my trauma, I had two emotions, nothing like May, where I just pushed everything down and my catchphrase was, I don't care, or anger. I basically fluctuated between trying to be neutral on everything and unfeeling to bursts of strong anger. So I really feel, I really, I really resonate with both May and Zuko. I've worked through a lot of my trauma now and I feel I'm in a better place, but as a teen, looking at teen Murphy, um, Zuko is a kid who has been taught to hate himself, and so he does, has been taught that he's unworthy and so he believes that he is. And even though through his own actions and through his own choices, he's gained the life that he was working towards, he still feels completely out of control. And his default response to everything is frustration and anger. And I just think that it's a pretty honest portrayal of what a lot of people go through when they're working through their trauma. And him not understanding it, him not even being able to explain why he's angry at nothing and everything and himself and dissatisfied even though he has what he wants, him not being able to figure out these emotions and figure out where it's all coming from, super relatable. So now when he's 16 and he's sitting in on a war meeting once again, and he does everything that he's supposed to, he stays silent, he realizes that this life is hollow, unsatisfying. It's not what he wants and it's not who he wants to be. And I oftentimes think about this moment and I think about how big of a moment, how 
terrifying and frustrating this moment must have been for him when he finally realizes that this thing, that he's hinged, his entire personality, the way he's chosen to shape himself since he was 13, um, what he considers his self-worth is in gaining his honor back, how he views himself and his future, everything, everything hinges on this, on returning home. And then he gets there and he realizes that he's unhappier than ever. And as he's playing out this role, he realizes this isn't actually where I wanna be. To hinge every piece of yourself onto something, gain that something, and then realize this was the wrong goal. This was the wrong spot. I just imagine that he could have gone in a really different direction, realizing that everything he's hinged himself on is unfulfilling. He could have spiraled harder, you know? He could have said, there is no happiness for me. There is no future. And he could have gone way darker. But because he had his uncle, because he did have an anchor, he knew that there was another option and he ran to him. In Zuko alone, he was isolated and he was somber. He was unfeeling and uncaring. Yet, even in the pits of his trauma, he still showed compassion. That was something that he really never was able to completely separate himself from. And on his travels alone, he sees firsthand how the Fire Nation has harmed so many people. And he learns firsthand that even when he's kind and shows compassion and bonds with them, when it's revealed who he is, the Fire Lord's son, he is still hated. Again, I look at this moment when he's rejected, not for his actions, in fact, the opposite, for him as a human. His actions have proven him trustworthy and have shown that he has a tremendous amount of care for them and compassion, but those things don't matter as much as who he is as a human, and he is wholly rejected as that. You are Zuko, I want nothing to do with you, regardless of what you've shown yourself to be. And add that to the trauma <laughs> that his father has already given him, add that to all the things that his father has already said and shown him of his worth. Again, I feel like this is a moment that he could have completely spiraled and said, see, there is no hope for me. I am worthless, I am useless. That's it. No one could ever accept me because who I am as a person will never be enough. But instead, what he took away from that was they hate us and they have every right to. And much, much later, when he's gone through everything that we just talked about, when he got what he wanted back and is faced with the reality that it isn't enough, and then he finally faces his father and confronts him and tells him, what you did to me was so wrong. The way you treated me, the way you raised me, that you challenged your 13-year-old child to an Agni Kai. He tells him, no, it's time for you to listen to me. It's time for you to sit down and hear me for once. And while he was a manipulated and abused child who was led down the path that he took, he still takes ownership for the part that he played in harming other people. It's so easy when you've been wronged and then you wrong others to just blame it on the person who wronged you. It's so easy when you've done wrong to pass responsibility off because there is a thread that got you here. But the fact that Zuko tells his father that they deserve to hate us, not they deserve to hate you, which they do, but us, is a massive part of his redemption, that he takes responsibility for what he's done and the part that he's played. He doesn't feel like, well, I had no choice, and he also doesn't feel like, well, I'm changed now, so people need to just forgive me and get over it. He takes responsibility for the part he plays, he owns it, he confronts it, and then he chooses to leave that life behind, this time for himself. And his father mocks him, and then his father tries to attack him, and using what he learned from Iroh, he's able to redirect that lightning. I believe he intentionally hits the ground, pushing him back instead of killing him. I think he definitely could have killed his father in that moment. And he leaves to follow his destiny. So previously I said that there were two reasons why his past attempt at redemption didn't work. One, he was now trying to become someone for Iroh instead of his father. Point two is that 
it was always his destiny to find the Avatar and regain his honor. Just not in the way he thought. Now he's figured out what his true destiny is, and it is to find the Avatar and to help him. And this is another facet of Zuko's redemption that makes it's so personal and so real. It's the fact that he's not just forgiven, even though Aang totally should have and could have forgiven him. Aang, the peacemaker. Aang, the one that gave Zuko chance after chance after chance. Aang, the one that desperately wants to see the best in everyone and desperately needs a firebending master to teach him. Aang could have said, oh, you're better now? Good. But he relies on his team to make the decision for him. One, I think because that's in his nature to want it to be a group decision and to want them to be comfortable with bringing someone into their crew. But two, I think because Aang is trusting, is, is distrusting his own judgment. He's tried to trust Zuko before and it's failed and he needs someone else to make this decision for him. And they reject him wholeheartedly. They threaten him, they tell him that they will never trust him, they tell him that those bridges have been burned. They reject the person. They reject Zuko on a very personal level, and they refuse to accept any concept of him having changed. He's, I mean, it's fair. It's super fair. And the thing is that Zuko acknowledges that it is fair. He acknowledges that, yeah, after what I've done to Aang and to Katara, and to all of them, yeah, they deserve to be mad at me. And that's the thing, it would be so easy for Zuko to say, but I've changed, but I'm different, but look at me, I'm in the middle of my redemption, forgive me. It's really hard when you're in the middle of your redemption and you internally know that that it is authentic and that it is real and you are working to reshape yourself and you're committed to this, it's difficult when you see where you are now, but what people see of you is what you've displayed to them previous and that's the filter that they see you through. It's incredibly frustrating to try to do better and constantly have your past thrown back in your face. And again, I look at this moment and I think about how this could have gone another way. He could have said, see, once again, I'm rejected. Once again, people don't trust me. Once again, my fate is sealed. I chose who I wanted to be for so long. There is no redemption for me. I will never be accepted back into society. But he dug his heels in and he said, this is who I'm choosing to be. This is my destiny. This is the role I'm supposed to play. And rather than feeling entitled to their forgiveness, he worked for it. He accepted that they deserved to reject him at this point. And he tried and tried and tried to prove himself. And even though he was only a part of Team Avatar for five episodes, oh my goodness, I can't believe it was so short. It feels so natural that he was a part of this team. It feels like he was always meant to be here at this point. Because his redemption isn't one single moment. It isn't one single conversation. It isn't one single decision that he made that set him on the right track. It's a series of a hundred different things that built up to something that made sense and that felt right. And during those five episodes that we see him as a part of our team, we see him working to make amends and to help them and to show that he truly is changed this time and earning back their trust and their loyalty. And for real life, that's what it looks like. It's a process and it's regaining trust and sometimes it's rejection. But for Zuko, this was the choice that he made for himself, and so this was the choice that he was finally able to stand by. After Zuko betrayed his uncle and was faced with the reality that this thing that he's been working towards isn't where he wants to be, he is forced or he chooses to set out alone again. But this time when Zuko is trying to find his path alone, it doesn't look the same as the episode Zuko alone. He isn't wandering and numb. He's learned from his world travels and from his personal experiences and from his father's counsel, advice, and love. And this time he, w he sets out alone assure, assured of who he wants to be, assured of what kind of life he wants, this time finally for himself. And that's why he's actually able to accomplish it this time. 
And being able to see the beginning and what shaped him to become the way that he is, seeing him act on that and choose to be something that is truly harmful to many, many people, seeing him go through a long journey with many confrontations and many changes and, and many worldview shifts and see how each and every one of them adds up to where he lands. Seeing him finally make a choice for himself and following his own destiny for him and not for anyone else. And seeing him finally gain his place on the throne and choose to lead into a time of peace and of unity, backed by the friendships that he's gained in Team Avatar. It's just an incredibly satisfying arc from a storytelling perspective, but also an incredibly relatable and hopeful arc for the viewers. I think one thing that Avatar succeeds at over and over and over again is that it not only is excellent storytelling and excellent character work, but it's very personal the way that it's told. It actually strongly and personally affects the viewer. And I think that's a big reason why it stands out as one of the best all these years later. I tried really hard not to go on a bunch of side tangents as I was writing up notes for this video. I started to do a tangent talking about Zuko and Iroh's, or Zuko's apology to Iroh and that whole scene, but I already talked about that in the video that I made on Iroh and he didn't want to get really repetitive. And then I started to do a, a break off talking about him and Azula and the parallels of them and how they were raised and their Agni Kai and everything that surfaced with them, but I really think that that just needs to be its own video. I really tried to keep it focused specifically on Zuko and his redemption. And I make these Avatar videos really slowly because they are a lot of work, especially with all the B-roll. And my plan was, after I did the Iroh video, because he's my favorite, uh, was to then do each of Team Avatar. But I think I'm I think I'm gonna do a video on Azula next because I just think that after Zuko, we really have to look at Azula, Azula and the parallels between them and, and what shaped her and so many things. And in the meantime, I guess I'll have a playlist linked of some Avatar videos that I've done in the past, if you like those. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the second channel. Check out my Patreon if you feel like it. We have a lot of fun over there. We do buddy reads and watch parties and all the good things. And of course, always please continue to chat with me about this in the comments. Let me know what you think of Zuko's redemption and if it hit personal for you as well. I'll see you again soon. Bye.